in Microsoft Fabric, mirroring enables real-time synchronization of external data sources with Fabric Lake House and Warehouse, which provide an avenue to keep Fabric data in sync with other databases without manual updates. Currently, databases such as Snowflake, Azure SQL Database, Azure Cosmos DB, and Azure Databricks can be mirrored, which enables seamless integration into the Fabric ecosystem. There are several benefits of mirroring, which includes one, reduction in data latency, improvement in data consistency, and an optimized way to manage and analyze external data directly within the Fabric ecosystem. In my previous video, I covered how to mirror Snowflake database, Azure SQL database, and Azure Cosmos DB. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to successfully mirror Databricks Unity Catalog in Microsoft Fabric and we're going to create Power BI reports on top of the mirrored tables using Star Schema modeling. Enough of talking, let's get started. Before we go into the practical side of things, let's see the sample data set. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and enable the bell icon to be notified of the videos. I'm going to come to this CSV files. I've got some open. Now, in this case, I've got this dimension table for the region. And when I come here, I can see I've got dimension table for the product, subcategory, and then we have the fact table that contains these columns of data. The order date, year, month, region, subcategory, product, price, quantity, and the sales. So we want to go ahead and create a unit catalog in our Azure Databricks. I'm going to come to the online platform and I'm currently in my Databricks workspace. So I'm going to come to Unity Catalog and then I can see I've got this serverless cluster running and this is within my organization. I've got this cornerstone Databricks. So I'm going to create a new catalog and I'm going to click on this plus sign and then click on add a catalog. I'm going to give this a meaningful name as dev and I'm going to choose the type. Now we have three types standard foreign and shared now i'm going to cover the foreign catalog in future videos so i'm going to stick with the standard and then for the storage location i'm going to choose the cornerstone databricks and i can see the path here so i'm going to click on create and we can see catalog created now we can go ahead and configure the newly created catalog and first we won't actually use this catalog on top of every of the workspaces so i'm going to stick with this all workspaces have access to this catalog click on next and then for the permissions so automatically i'm going to inherit these all account users and i'm going to scroll down and click on next for the metadata which contains the tags and so i'm just going to click on save so we can see successful the catalog dev has been updated now i can see the dev catalog here now within the catalog we'll create schemas which are basically databases so i'm going to click on this dev and i can see the defaults and the information schema so after i select this dev i can click on this create schema and then we can give the schema a meaningful name first we'll create a schema named f sales schema and I'm going to choose the storage location, which is the same thing as the Cornerstone Databricks and click Create. So the schema has been created successfully and I can see the F sales. Now when I expand, I'm going to see we have no data. Now I'm going to go ahead and ingest data into the newly sales created schema. I'm going to click on this Create and then I can create a table. And I'm going to browse through my local file and I just want to import this sales2025.csv and I can see the preview of the data being uploaded. I can see the name of the catalog, the name of the schema and the name of the table. I'm going to just modify the name and just use sales. And then we can see the preview of the data. Once I'm happy, I'm going to click on create table. Okay, so the sales table has been created. We can see the overview, we can see the columns, the type, and then when I come to the sample data, I can preview the content. And I'm going to come to the details, and then we can see this is a managed type, and then we have the storage location, the properties, and so on and so forth. Now, for now, we have no data. I'm going to click on this refresh, and then we're going to see the sales table within the F sales schema. So we want to go ahead and create two more schemas, and then in just more table. I'm going to again make sure this is selected the dev and then click on create schema 
and I'm going to call this one DIM product schema. And then I'm going to choose the solid location, which is going to be the same cornerstone data bricks, and then click on create. So this has been created. Again, we need to import some data into the table. So I'm going to select the DIM product and then click on create table. And I'm going to browse through the file, go to the DIM product.csv file. And I'm going to see the name of the schema, and I can just call this one product. And once I'm happy, click on create table. The product table has been successfully created. I can click on the sample data tab and see the preview of the table. So I want to go ahead and create additional schema. So again, I'm going to click on the dev catalog, click on the create schema. I'm going to call this one DIM region. And I want to choose the same location, click create. And this has been created. So again, I want to select the DIM region schema and then click on create a table. And I'm going to browse and select the DIM region.csv. I can see the preview. I can just change the name a little bit. I'm going to call this on region and then click on create table. Okay, so the region has been created. Let's just create one more table based subcategory. Again, I'm going to click on the dev catalog, click on the create schema. I'm going to call this one DIM subcategory. And I'm going to choose the same location, the cornerstone data breaks, and then click create. So this has been created. Again, I want to select the DIM subcategory schema, the same thing as database. Click on create table. And then we we'll go ahead and browse to the DIM subcategory.csv. And I can just make changes to this name, get rid of this DIM. And once I'm happy, I'm going to hit create at the bottom. We want to go ahead and mirror all this Unity catalog assets in Microsoft Fabric. In order to be able to successfully do that, the metastore of the Unity catalog must be enabled for external data access. And how do you do that? I'm going to click on this gear icon and then click on Metastore. We can see the name of the Metastore, we can see the ID, the region, and then we have the external data access, which is in the preview. Now, it is important this is enabled. So I'm going to turn it on to enable it, and then I can click on the Catalog Explorer. And this has been enabled. We also need to grant the external use schema privilege to the schema or the parent catalog. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on this to expand the dev catalog. And then I will click on the F sales schema. And to grant the external use schema, I'm going to click on this permissions and then click on the grant. And this is part of the governance. So for the principles, I'm going to click on this drop down, search for my name and select. And for the privilege presets, this is going to be data reader. So I can read data from this. I think this is enough. And then we're going to see all oh, these privileges, use schema, apply tag, and so on and so forth. But we want to focus on this external use schema. This is what's going to actually work with mirroring in Microsoft Fabric platform. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So please enable the external use schema. So I'm going to go ahead and grant. So that has been granted. Now, notice I only granted it on the F sales, not the DIM category, region, or the product. And I'm going to show you the reason why that is really important. So we are done with this environment. I'm going to go to the data factory tab here. This is the app.powerbi.com. And I've got this Databricks workspace created. I'm going to click on this new item. And in this new item pane, I'm going to click on this filter and I'm going to set for mirror. And I can say mirror Azure Databricks catalog, click on that. And in this window, we can provide the connection, which is really important. I'm going to create a new connection just to show you how to do all of this successfully. And we're going to provide the connection URL. Now, how do you get out? It's really easy. I'm going to come back to the catalog, and this is what I need. So I'm going to copy everything to this part, the HTTPS, and then we can see all the details to this .NET. Ctrl C, and come back here, and I can see, even see the description, Ctrl V. So this is accurate. And then we can go ahead and use the whatever name we want for the connection name. For the connection name, I'm just going to call this one Databricks Connection. 
you can use whatever you like. And then for the authentication kind, I'm going to use the organization account, which is quite straightforward because this is linked to my Entra ID. So I'm going to click on sign in and then I'm going to choose my account. And yes, I'm fully signed into my Entra ID. So I can scroll down and click on connect. So this worked fine. So I'm going to click on next. And then we are in the choose data. Now in the choose data, we're going to choose the catalog name. I'm going to click on this drop down and choose the dev catalog we created. And then we're going to see all the schemas and the tables. Now we're going to have this default schema, which is default anyway. You can see we have the default. And then I can see the dim product schema. I can see the dim region. I can even scroll down and I can see the F sales. Now, I can click on this shelf to expand. I'm going to say the sales table within the F sales schema, the same thing as the database. Now, when I click on this sales, I can see the information such as the name, the type, storage location, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to scroll down and I can see more details such as the data source format as a delta and then the full name and so on and so forth. Now, don't forget we applied the external use schema on top of the FCs only. So I want to actually mirror all of this. So I'm going to click on next. Now, before I click on next, we can see automatically sync feature catalog changes for selected schema. This simply means whatever changes occurred in the Azure Databricks unit catalog, this dev, it will automatically be synced in the Microsoft Fabric. So click on next. And then in the review and create, we can see the summary and you can see the source, the destination. Now we can provide the artifact name that we're going to use in Microsoft Fabric. So I'm going to call this one Unity Catalog Data. You can use whatever you like. It's absolutely up to you. So we can see uh, this invalid character. So let me just use uh, Unity Catalog. Okay, I think this is acceptable. And I'm going to scroll down. So there's an option to choose the sensitivity label. I'm going to just use the personal because this is not special. This is my personal tenant. And then click on create. Okay, so we have the DIM product schema, DIM region, DIM subcategory, and the F sales. Now I'm going to click on the Chevron and I can click on the sales table. Okay, so we have the order date, year, month to the sales column, which is fine. Now let's check the DIM subcategory, region, and product. Now when I click on this, I'm going to see the table fairly enough. Click on that. Now when I click, I'm going to see this error. I don't have permission to view this table. Okay, so you can see, check your permission for this catalog or try again. So we couldn't access this. Now when I do the same thing for the region, I'm going to get the same error. Now what do we do? We have to enable the external use schema on top of those schemas in the Unity Catalog environment. And then we can come back to this environment, refresh, and then we can preview the tables. So I'm going to come back here quickly and let's do the same thing for the theme subcategory. Make sure this is selected the name of the schema. And then go to the permissions, the governance, click on the grants. And then I want to set for my name, Abiola David. And then I'm going to use the data reader privilege preset. And very important, I'm going to choose the external use schema and then grants. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the DIM region. Select that schema, come to the permissions, grants. And I'm going to use my principal again and select for the privilege preset, data reader, external use schema selected. Click on Grant, and then we want to do the same thing for the DIM product. Make sure this is selected. Come to the Permissions, Grant, and I want to search for the principal. And I want to use the Data Reader, Privilege Preset, External Use Schema Selected, and that privilege is granted. Now, when I come back to the Microsoft Fabric environment, I can just click on this Refresh button. And you can see this is spinning. And as soon as this is done, we should be able to preview each of the three tables. So this is done. Now I can click on this region and let's see the results. Amazing. So you can see the importance of the external use schema when you want to mirror 
Databricks in Microsoft Fabric. This is really important. So once this is sorted, we can go to the SQL analytic endpoint and query the data. Now, don't forget, we're going to create a Power BI report on top of these three tables. So there we go. Now, just like you know, the schema are databases. So we can see we have the DIM products schema and then the DIM region, the subcategory and the FCS. And now we'll go ahead and create a relationship across the four tables. I'm going to come to the model layout. In the model layouts, I can see all the tables. Let me just close this for now. I can see all the tables here, okay? Now, I'm just going to create a new layout and I'm going to expand this DIM product. I'm going to right click and use the insert into canvas. I'm going to come close this and then expand the DIM region. I can click on this, expand tables. I can even click on this ellipsis, the same thing, insert into canvas. And I can collapse this. I can do the same thing for the DIM subcategory, expand the tables, right click, insert into the canvas, collapse. And then for the fact table, expand the tables, right click, and then insert into the canvas. So we have the four tables. Now we can create the one to many relationship for a star schema dimensional modeling. So I'm going to move this to the left hand side just to make it more easier for me. And I'm going to move this to one side. So I want to go ahead and create one to many relationship across the fact table and the three dimension tables. Now, the order is you have to pull the data from the columns in the fact table first and then connect to the table in the dimension table. So let's start with this product. I'm going to grab this product, the many side. I'm going to drag across to the product that is the unique in the dimension table. I'm going to scroll down. Unfortunately, we can't we can't see anything in this preview, but it's gonna work. So I'm gonna scroll down. We can see we have the cross filter direction, which is a single, and this is gonna be many to one cardinality. So I'm gonna click on save, and we have the one to many relationship, many to one, and I'm gonna do something for the region. So I'm gonna drag the region across to the region table in the region region column. So I'm gonna scroll down, click on save. And then for the subcategory, I'm going to grab the subcategory table across to the subcategory here, to the columns, and then I'm going to scroll down and then click on Save. So you can see we have the one-to-many relationship across the columns of the tables. So this has been created. So we'll go ahead and create our Power BI report. Now to do that, I'm going to click on this reporting and then we'll create a new report. Now, we're going to stick with these four tables as part of our Power BI Semantic model. Click on Continue. Okay, successfully updated semantic model. And we can see the four tables, which is super cool. Now, we just can create an explicit measure, but because of time, I'm going to use an implicit measure just to make things faster. Now, since we have relationship across the four tables, I'm going to expand the sales, which is our fact table, and I'm going to drag the sales across to the canvas. And let's want to slice this by the product. I'm going to expand this and then drag it across here. So this is going to give us an implicit measure. So we can see the sales by product. And let's see the region by unit or quantity. I'm going to drag the region across here. And then I'm going to drag the quantity. And we're going to, just going to see this in form of a pie chart. So this works fine. And let's do the same thing finally for the subcategory. So let's see the um, sales by the subcategory. So I'm going to drag here. And there we go. So this worked. I can even change this to the bar chart. So this is fine. So this worked fine. And we can see that we are able to successfully mirror the Azure Databricks Unity catalog in our Microsoft Fabric. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, comment, share, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.